Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at 5. It is Wednesday, two-show day, January 23rd. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And over here we have Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hey, Beth, who's our guest today? This is a repeat guest. She's yes. been here before. Repeat We're offender. Talk, a repeat offender. <laughs> Joshua Boone is here from Ooh. Network. That's exciting. Network is such an incredible. Everybody it's needs to must see, see Network. Must see. And like, I, there's so much to talk to about. Do you about. want to talk about this bucket? Oh, so um, <laughs> this is. The, we'll get to thing. things. Yeah. So Fox, there's a rent. Rent is happening. Oh really? Tell um, me more. Rent live is happening on, on Sunday night. Rent on Fox. And they, I'm sorry, rent hashtag rent on Fox. She went to the studio, so she knows all the rules. <laughs> right, right. So um, they keep sending us swag. Hey Beth, which I used to drum, but I forgot how. Which Clearly. character? Don't ask me questions me? about rent. I don't Which remember. Which character drums? I, I don't know. You really don't know that Angel comes in. Of course in. I know it, Angel. Today for you. Tomorrow and, for me, yes. Um, this is a really, I like inside references. Mm -hmm. Let's go so for I it. So I appreciate You this. can tell us all the references. I, I was like, because when it came, I said, does that have in it? And it did. So anyone who loves rent, this has, ready? Um... Bustelo, Marlboro, <gasps> bananas by the bunch. Yes. A box of Captain Crunch that tastes so good. Ooh. And firewood. Wow. This is inside of the insider. And yes. vodka. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll throw that in there. That's and these good. aren't Marlboro. But anyway, so uh, thank you. It's very noisy Fox, for you. For all the rent stuff. Keep sending more. For those of you we are fans. <laughs> for those of you listening to the podcast, I say I'm sorry. We're yeah, sorry. you have to watch it on video to make sense. <laughs> anyway, but thank you. Thanks anyway, for uh, that's that's all we're going to say about that that's for now. Uh, we're going to get to our top five. A revival is officially coming next season. This okay. is exciting. <laughs> Let's hey, talk about it. You know it. who we've been missing on Broadway? Audra McDonald. Yeah. I mean, look. Where is she? I love her, her on Tony's. social media. I follow her. <laughs> yeah, she's out loved, there tweeting. I loved seeing that she went to see Once in this Island in yeah. the final week. And I was like, oh, Audra's almost on Broadway, but she's, she's coming the back to Broadway. This is six time Tony Award winner, Audra McDonald. She's been here. You love her. We love her. We also love. Frankie and Johnny in the Claire de Lune, which is Terrence McNally's, one of Terrence McNally's early successes. Yeah. Uh, it was a big hit off Broadway. Um, and she will be coming with Tony nominee and two time Oscar nominee Michael Shannon. So that's like a really interesting. That's an interesting two combo. People we never thought of together before. But I like the combo. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. Right. And it's a very sexy two hander. Mm -hmm. um, Frankie and Johnny work in a diner together. And uh, there was a revival not well, that long ago. Well, I'm talking about the plot, oh, though. Oh, tell me the plot, so Paul. So Frankie, um, Johnny gets out of prison. He's a short order cook. Frankie is the waitress. They meet in the diner, and then they have a one night stand, and then complications ensue. Then the very New York, very New York romance. That's um, right. It did. It, it started off Broadway in 1987. E, uh, I'm sorry, no. No, I almost got it wrong. Uh, Kathy, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates, very famous. This was Kathy, Kathy Bates', Bates first really big, big breakout. Big breakout thing with Kenneth Welch. Um, they were in it off Broadway, mm -hmm. and then it became a movie, which is one of my favorite movies. I knew People this. don't give enough respect to the movie. <laughs> Terrence McNally also wrote the movie and expanded it for the screen. That's so right. you actually see the one I stand, and then you see everything before and after. And they have friends and things. It's not just the two of them. And Nathan Lane's in it, and he's great. There you go. Uh, and um, and uh, Michelle Kate Pfeiffer. Mulligan. Okay, oh, I'm Mulligan. sorry. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer and, and Al, Pacino. Al Pacino. Anyway, it's fantastic. So don't believe the haters. It's a good movie. <laughs> and then it came back to Broadway with Edie Falco and Sally Tucci, and then Rosie Perez and Joe Pantoliano took Joey over. Joey Pants. Anyway, it's a really good play. Actors love it. We love it. It's coming back to Broadway in May at a Schubert venue, TBA, and it'll be a 16-week run. And hey, Audra, can't wait to see you. Welcome back. We can't get enough of this news. Okay. <gasps> Are you ready? <laughs> Wait, Are you this ready? is also exciting because I didn't know what they were going to call it, and they named it after my favorite song. Michael Jackson musical is happening. Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. It's called Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. <laughs> off the wall. Off the wall, the first album I ever bought. Thank I'm sorry. You. Oh, I didn't Before, know this about wow. you. I, I, it's Paul like, that's my trivia for the win. Okay, this is going to have a pre-Broadway run at the James M. Nederlander Theater in Chicago. Th this has a very it's highfalutin. Big. This is big. Yeah, Okay. It's expected to arrive on Broadway in 2020. I assume we'll still be alive. It'll be good. Uh, performances oh begin October 29th for a limited run through December 1st. In That's Chicago. in Chicago. Okay, we're going. It's written by Lynn Nottage. I know. 
Wow. I know. Two time Pulitzer winner, Lynn Nottage, we're talking about. That's like sweat fan, and that's ruin. cred, street cred, fancy. <laughs> Very what fancy. Else? Speaking of who's, fancy. Who's directing choreographed? To- oh, well, I'll, well, I can tell you, Paul, thanks for asking. Christopher Wheeldon. He knows Mike that. Drop. He knows Mike that. Drop. An American in Paris. He can do that. Uh, won a Tony for an American in Paris. He's very fancy. They've had some top He's secret He's going to have readings. some moonwalking, yes. We've been hearing about top We've secret readings We've been hearing about this for a while. Cast. That's and right. So I'm curious to see who's in it. Now, this should not be confused with Thriller Live in London, which has been running for a long time. That's oh a God. different thing. Every time we go thing. to London, Beth's like, why, haven't we go, why aren't we going We've to see Thriller seen it. Live? It's not that. Um, this is but <laughs> if you walk down 44th Street, right above the Hayes Theater, they put up a, a poster for this mm-hmm. with yeah. just Michael dancing, the logo with the uh, the sequin socks. It's White good. Club. Yeah. But they don't say what it is, but that was like a teaser. So but go, like you go see them and you know what it is. It. Yeah. Go take pictures of that a and poster. get ready. We're, I think we need to book a trip to Chicago uh, oh, I'm for there. the fall. Anyway, that's Top some exciting it. news. We are never, ever, ever getting rid of him. I don't know how that sounded. Ah, but, um, I was gonna sing we're it, not but rid I didn't want to uh, commit. Ogie. Ogie. Ogie is a Broadway institution now. The musical waitress. You is... got a lot of waitress and waiters. You got a lot going on here with your, your news. <laughs> I'm There's big a with I'm, yeah. I'm big with You're the work with, 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 with the wait staff. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, as I'm thinking about the connection. No, if anything, waitress is like Alice. That's what I always say. The this sitcom Alice. Anyway, uh, Ogie. So the movie, it started as a movie, Waitress. It was like a small sort of indie, indie movie. movie that we saw because we're of a different generation. And then it became a musical for the today's generation. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why? Why would you do uh, this to Ogie me? is the adorable, what do you call him? What's his, what's he a going A quirky for? guy. He's that guy. Yeah. Um, he loves he, you like a he table. He loves tape. Loves her like a table. Loves her like a table. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christopher Fitzgerald has been nailing that role on and off. Since, Since the show the opened. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, Eddie Jemison, who is the adorable... Oh, you're clapping. The adorable <laughs> Ogie from the film is coming to the Broadway production. What a cool thing. He's been around before. He was there on this opening This is like night. what happened with the band's visit. They just bring in the film oh, actors. Oh, wow. Wow. You just blew my mind. Beth. You're welcome. You're welcome. He's a veteran of the Chicago theater scene. He was in Life Sucks. He was in Two Gentlemen of Verona, which shows a lot of range, I think. Because one's not Shakespeare and one is, and he's been in a lot of movies. He was recent and in, on TV. He was recently on Chicago Med. Um, he will be joining on February fourth with <laughs> Joey McIntyre, which is the other exciting new cast wow. member. Waitress man, it just keeps going, and they keep getting really interesting people yeah. over there at the diner. <laughs> at the diner, but, uh, not Audrey McDonald yet. But not yet. Anyway, save the date for our new favorite TV show. We are obsessed Wait, with... I'm really excited about all the news tonight. We are obsessed with Fosse <laughs> Verdon, and all we've seen is like 30 seconds of the trailer. Fosse Verdon is a new show about Gwen Verdon and Bob Fosse and the people around them. It uh, now has a date on FX. It will be on April 9th at 10 p.m. I will be watching this. Yeah. It stars Michelle Williams as Gwen Verdon and Sam Rockwell as Bob Fosse and a whole slew of Broadway Good people word. playing Broadway people from back then. Current Broadway stars playing classic Broadway stars. Thank you. Uh, it, it will have an eight episode, oh, it's an eight episode TV event. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's executive produced by Stephen Levinson, yep. Joel, Joel Fields, and Lin-Manuel Miranda, yeah. and Thomas Kale, who also, I believe, directs the pilot. Mm-hmm. It's going to win I'm going to throw, so I'm gonna throw some names at you real quick. Yeah. Norbert Leo Butts, Ethan Slater, Kelly Barrett, Laura Osnes. I know, it's a big what? deal. It's April big 9th, deal. April 9th. Broadway's cool. It's cool. And this London show is going worldwide. Um, I was just watching um, Sex Education on Netflix. Okay. Gillian Anderson is fantastic on it, which reminds me, which brings me to the next story. Uh, She is in All About Eve in the West End. Yes. Because she's a very fancy. She's not the X Files star. No, she's a fancy, legit uh, stage actress. So it's they're doing all about fancy. Eve with Lily James, yep. which the kids love her from mm. Cinderella, right? And Mama awesome. Cinderella, I'm not a kid. Oh, I'm sorry, of course. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, and directed by Ivo Manhova, who um, we're going to talk about. Guest knows him. <laughs> very for the fancy. Name drop, Paul. Very A list. Very A list. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, I'm bearing the lead. You can watch it in movie theaters on April 11th. So you don't have to fly to London but you to can. see it at the Coward Theater, although we might. Um, it starts February 2nd in London. But on April 11th, you can just go to the movie theater, and that's amazing. Yeah, I love, I love how when they, they do, do that. that. It's awesome. There's so many things happening in movie theaters. Hey, these Paul, days. why don't you take your Captain I just, Crunch I can't believe I and your <laughs> bananas, <laughs> knowing that there's Captain Crunch. Take your bucket and your cereal. Okay. And. I'm gonna go. I gotta. I've got a guest here. You don't. I bet you don't even I've, eat Captain Crunch. 
Captain Crate. Oh. Uh, oh, Paul. <laughs> oh, Paul. All right. Take your bucket. Thanks, you. Take Thanks. your cereal. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Well, Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest today? <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> I'll tell you, let me tell you all about our guest today. We have Joshua Boone in the studio with us today. He is currently appearing in Network on Broadway. He has previously appeared on Broadway in Holler If You Hear Me, and his off Broadway credits include Actually and Mother Courage and Her Children. He has appeared on screen in Wheels. Fangirl, Law and Order SVU, and Seven Seconds on Netflix, which is a really good show. You should definitely watch it. Uh, be sure to stay up to date on all things network related by following Network B Way on social media and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Josh and Beth. Hi, Josh. Ooh, what's up? What's up? I'm so glad you're here again. <laughs> Me too. Before we get started talking about all things network, mm. let's talk about the sweatshirt. Yeah. Ooh. So you're wearing a hoodie. Yeah. It says network opening night December 6, 2018. Good night. Mm -hmm. Beautiful night. Beautiful night. Absolutely. It says UBS. UBS. What does that stand Union for? Union Broadcasting Systems. Uh huh. And what does yeah. that you mean know, to that's, you? That's the network. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's, that's where it goes down at. That's where it happens. Mm -hmm. you, you play a person, I wouldn't call him a people person. I would uh, call him not a people person. What would you call Frank Hackett? Well, you know, Frank's introduction to the show, you know, it, it's easy to label him not a people person. I'm not labeling. Uh, I'm just I would call my, Frank. It's my ob observation. I, I personally would call Frank a hero. Oh, okay, go on. You know, is um, he's about the numbers, about the success it's gonna save of the, the company. company. Exactly. And um, there are people who are not on board with his plan. And uh, being not on board with his plan is not the um, best position to be in. And if you're against him, then yeah, he will be not a people person in those moments. And um, but it's it's a fun role, you know. I get to talk a lot of trash, you know. You to do. <laughs> to so this role, people. let's just let's let's educate the people. So if you haven't seen Network yet, you have to see it. It's a spectacle. There are cameras everywhere. It's a theater event, and at the same time, mm -hmm. it's like a multimedia it's crazy. explosion, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know which camera to look at right now, but just know it's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy. You can look at both of them. Unlike anything I've ever experienced on stage as an actor, you know, I don't get, I don't get to witness it nightly, but the stuff that I did see, you know, in rehearsals and everything, like I I was like one memory I have is just sitting in the audience watching the opening scene and knowing what's going to happen. I'm sitting there watching the scene, I'm just like my heart's just racing. Yeah. You know, like what is going on? Why? It's, it's really an adrenaline the, rush. It is. All of the technical elements and that's perhaps the Evo, Uncle E, you know, Uncle as I call e. him, spelled with an I. And um, it's just like his mind, you know, his, he's such a, a visionary when it comes to, you know, just the entire world and technical elements and aspects of a, of a show, of a play. And um, he's literally playing with your emotions with every single element, you know, every lighting cue, every yeah. sound cue, every visual cue, uh, uh, every You're every bombarded actor. with different images. Absolutely. It's, it's intense, to say it's the least. Totally intense. Both to be a part of and to witness, you know? So what did you know about Network before you signed on to do this? Um, have you seen the movie? Before, I, I did not. I have not seen the movie yet. I didn't want to watch the movie because... So Robert Duvall plays your part in right, the movie. Right. I didn't want his voice in my head at good, all. Good point, you know, yeah. Um, it's not, you know based on a true story, so I didn't do that kind of research, you know, if, if, I, if I was playing a real life character, I would have wanted to hear right. the voice, everything, sense. but this, this for, for Robert Duvall to have played the role, you know, in the film, 1976 movie, you know, and f it was a huge success, I didn't want his voice in my head as I was developing the character for myself. So you still haven't seen the movie? I have not. I won't watch it until after. Oh, um, that's gonna be after we finish. I want to watch you watching. It. I, yeah, a few people have said that <laughs> to me too. You know, I'm excited to you know get my hands on it and watch it. So let's know. just explain to the people who Frank Hackett is in terms of you know Brian Cranston's the star, he's the anchor. Who's yeah. Frank in the in the, you know the in the world of the in play? the world of it? Yeah. I mean, some people might label him the antagonist. I wouldn't, you know, I call him the hero just only because in your mind, he's, sure. He's cool. trying. He's trying to you know change shift the culture. He's you like know, young he's, and ambitious. Absolutely, he's a senior executive vice president of Union Broadcast Systems, and um, and he was kind of brought in by the company that bought the network. So he's immediately at odds with everyone currently working there because they don't know him. He doesn't. He's know there to them, shake things up, and he's and he's dictating, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so if anybody to come in, you know, in a position of power and just immediately, this is what you need to do. This is what's going to happen. No questions asked. It's going to cause tension, and um, but it's necessary, you know, because the network is failing. And uh, that's his responsibility. If not, his job is on the line. So there's So if someone pressure. has a meltdown on camera, maybe he thinks that's a hit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> maybe he does. You know? Yeah. And maybe maybe the person who thought he would use the the this, the platform 
uh, for his own benefit gets used. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very much a, a political show in that regard, you know, speaks to present day about how manipulated we are by media, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. by, by what we view constantly. Considering you know? it was written, or the movie was written in a time when there were three networks and that was it. Yeah, and it was, um, like, it was considered satire at the time. Yeah. It was not, you know, it was like, oh, this would never happen when it was viewed and back now in the it's 70s. A now reality. it's a very real and present thing. And it's scary in that regard to know that something written, you know, how many years ago is that? 30, 40 years ago, you know, written that long ago is, you know, the <laughs> Patty Shayevsky's a, a prophet, you know, for that in that sense, you know, just to yeah. predict that. And uh, it's, it's scary. It's scary, but also cool, you know. So come out and check it out. You know, see what we're talking about. And the sideburns. When did yeah. you start growing them? Let's just get to the important things <laughs> first. <okay? laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the sideburns. Yeah, that was. I had a beard for the first time, <laughs> and uh, ever. You know, I didn't even know I could grow a beard. And then um, they were like, "Nah, that's that's too contemporary." Because the show was set in the '70s, but yeah. we also have. Um, contemporary elements, mm -hmm. you know, just to blend the worlds, just to show you that. So you, you sort of feel like the, the, the is fashion is a little 70s, little the 70s. commercials are 70s, yeah, but, but you feel like it's now. kind of happening Yeah, right now, exactly. Yeah. And um, so we blend the worlds a little bit. So we got rid of the beard and, you know, they wanted the sideburns to stay and I was all for it. You know, I have <laughs> never done this. I'm having fun with them. You know, they won't stay after the show is over, but um, You're be shaving them and super watching cool, the movie. you know, check your boy out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> 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 Tell yeah. me about working with Ibo Van Hova. It's a, like, He's considered like a visionary. He does things very differently from other directors yeah. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is that experience like? Oh, like what do I what do I want to talk about? <laughs> um, okay, so here's what I here's what I'll say. You know, we all had we all came in off book. You know, that was that was mandatory. That, One, that was required. Yeah, it, it, it's required. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> the show is a transfer. So right, I can't speak to the entirety of the experience because I was not originating from the ground up with Evo, mm. but in stepping into the role, he was very much present and very much there every day. And this and whole company stepped in except for Brian Cranston. Yeah, except, except for Brian. Oh. Brian did it um, at the, the National, National in London. And um, just to do that and for him to still be open, you know, to mm -hmm. what we want to bring, you know, he's all about play. And Brian being at the helm, he's a master of play. The show is never the same. Every night is something different. Really? Absolutely. You'll never you'll never you feel that in the audience you'll a little bit. Never see the same. And they play with show. the audience too, I'm just warning you. Yeah, absolutely. And, um it's just and Evo made space for that. You know, he made space for us to bring our creative elements to the show. Now I will, you know, speaking of myself, speaking for myself personally, it was it was wild to step into this map, this platform, a world where, you know, so many technical elements, so many, the, some of the hottest lights I've ever been on under on stage, you know, so you cameras have to in hit your, your face. marks because you're on you're on screen at the same time, right? Uh, or are they just following you around? Well, yeah, they kind of follow, but we, you know, we have set blocking, but it's not like you have to be specifically here okay. in order mm. for, you know, it's more so the camera, you know, their their frames have to be set up to cover us from a certain perspective and and Victoria and Joe are off the hook they are steady cam operators and they kill it you know um mm -hmm. everybody's killing it and it's just <laughs> I mean some people literally and uh, <laughs> it's like I'm playing this is a joke you know maybe I did a little, you know, little, little foreshadowing little, yeah. potentially <laughs> oh no nobody's dying and um <laughs> it's just the guy I, I really hope I can work with him again someday just mm -hmm. to get the full scope just to get the the I feel like I work with Evo like 70%. I worked with 70% of who Evo is. Mm -hmm. I would love to see what that 30%, you know, us figuring out the map together would be like, you know, mm -hmm. what that feels like. But the guy's mind, you know, is unrivaled, I believe, um, when it comes to how he approaches the work, you know, how he sees his show. Right, because he know? has to see it as a whole cloth. Yeah, and, and like I said prior, every single piece means something. Mm -hmm. Like he's, like this, it, the biggest thing I've learned is the psychology of theater. The psychology of the technical choice and how every element plays with your emotions, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. plays with your mind. He's playing tricks on the audience. And it's but as an actor, how is it working with him and making your personal choices? Oh, that's 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 the that's what I'm speaking to. Like, I feel like in this we were on sh we were on such short time. Mm -hmm. We there was not as much exploration that I feel like we could have navigated had. We had we all originated it right, from the right, beginning, right. but even in even in the amount of time that we had, Evo was hands off. You got some freedom. It, ultimate freedom. Wow. Like only thing he would really say is, "This is where I want you to go." So being off book also put you in that position where you were 
Yeah, and hands I love free. that. Like, I love hands off, show me what you got. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the ultimate form of creativity, and that's why I love working with them. That's awesome. All right, we're going to take some questions. Yes. I know there are a lot. We got lots we're of all questions. Fans. I love them. All right, so Alec would like to know, is it hard acting for both the cameras and the audience at the same time? Yeah, so the, the big, that's a great question. The, um, as an actor, we, also, we always talk about um, the switch between mm. being on camera versus being on stage and how they're so different. Yeah. And yes, they are. You know, mm -hmm. they, they are different, and, but at the same time, there's a lot of commonality between them. And I think the hardest part about it is being in front of an audience, because some of this action happens off stage in front of the cameras. And I guess um, the hardest part about it is one moment being in front of the audience, in front of all of these people, walking off stage and then sitting into a close-up. Mm. You know, the, the energy, the transference of the energy, mm. that's probably the most difficult piece of it all. Otherwise, Evo, he didn't want us to pay attention to the cameras. You know, he wanted us to do us. And as an audience us. member, your, your attention is split. Sometimes you're watching screens and right. sometimes you're watching the stage. For a reason. And for a reason. <laughs> but people are looking in different directions. It's not like you're completely manipulated like you would be, you know. Yeah, no. Film. He's not he one thing he's not doing is telling you where to look. Right, right, right. Mm. So you can and see all the little business and stuff that's happening. They're everywhere. You know, yeah. we have a, a a restaurant on stage. You know, you can yeah. there's so much to look at, Those so are fun much seats. to see. Absolutely. And uh, you know, pe we even interact, you know, from time to time, um, with the people sitting over How there. How does that cool. feel to interact with the audience? I'm gonna share a story, a little oh. quick, uh, you know, something that happened that may happen again. You know, it hasn't happened. Evo, he didn't want me to do it, but uh, it, it may, it might make another appearance. But you know, we have a lot of, you know, a restaurant. They have a, like a four or five course meal yeah. on stage, and there was one night I think my first preview, where, you know, they're, they're serving alcohol, and um, I, there was this moment in the show where I get, you know, I fire somebody, and I feel good about that. You know, I feel good about that moment. And for me, I see this drink. Uh oh, on, here we go. <laughs> on the stage, you know, the, the person sitting in the restaurant had their drink. And I decided, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to celebrate this moment. So I walked over and <laughs> I took the drink and had a drink on stage. You know, that's, I've never done that before. And it's not, I know it's not supposed to happen. You know, equity don't come after me. I love y'all. You know, it's you just, were celebrating. You were in character. I was. It wasn't even me that it drank the you. drink. Frank it Hackett was Frank had Hackett, Hackett had a drink celebrating that moment, and it was cool. <laughs> you know, and like my cast was like, oh, like it was crazy. And um, that's good. Keep it's, just, them awake. it's fun. You know, yeah. it's just it's just caters to to the fun. You know, and that's something that I wouldn't do every night, but you know, it will make another appearance at some point throughout the run. <laughs> it will. Sorry, sure. Evo. It's you know, you know, Evo, we, we don't know what. I love Evo. That's Uncle E. You know, Uncle e. I think he kind of knows it's going to happen to him. You call him Uncle point. E to him, to his face? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I do. I guess if not, he's yeah, learning man. a lot. Not that much, you know what I'm saying, but yeah. Enough. And he's heard it more he's than enough. He's heard it. Now. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I love that. So Alexandra wants to know, what will the audience... Alexandra who? Sosha? Yeah. So, yeah. My oh, homegirl? No. no. I'm like, I'm joking, I'm joking. Different Alexandra. All right, cool. Alexandra <laughs> Pajaco. Ooh. She says, what will the audience be thinking about in the car as they drive home after I see this show? Oh, what so you much. What thinking about? Oh, oh, oh. It depends on who you are when you enter the show. Okay, Ooh, good answer. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. Um, what you bring to that theater, you will have to, you know, come to grips with as you, you walk You have to out. digest this show. There's yeah. a lot of elements to sort of think about. Uh, absolutely, afterwards. because we're all, Brian has this beautiful monologue where he pretty much shows that we're all part of the system that's happening today. Mm -hmm. And then you'll leave thinking about how you're a part of the system. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the major takeaway. And you might not spend so much time in front of the TV afterwards or <laughs> on your devices. Who knows? You know, mm -hmm. it's a lot to think about. <laughs> cool. We'll do uh, one last question. This is from Scott. Scott. Uh, he asks, are there any roles that you would like to tackle? Yeah. You know, this what man can they? sing. I just want to put All that right. out there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, absolutely. Um, Othello being one. Mm. Hamlet being another. Shakespeare, you know, I, I wasn't a big fan growing up, but just fell in love with the language over time. And um, those classic roles specifically, yes. Um, a mini of August Wilson pieces I would love to step into um, ah so much um, ensemble pieces uh, a soldier's play like I love mm. I love that that script um, but we gotta hear movie. you sing too to give us a musical um, I don't I, I don't know that many musicals I would love to do a new musical or if I were to pick an old musical that I, I know 
uh, maybe <laughs> somebody help me. We know you did Ain't Misbehaving in College. I did do Ain't Misbehaving in College. Was yeah, on. yeah, absolutely. The um, it was fun too. Dang, that was a good time. <laughs> Shout out Jasmine Cole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoot, my home girl. Who else was in that? Josh Grace. Um, 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 who, oh, Lisa and Ryko, we had a good time. Um, I don't, help you know, me out. So you're more of like having these classic, like Mount Everest type Shakespearean roles. I mean, if you, if. Because August Wilson's like Shakespeare of the 20th century, so yeah, there he's, you go. he's amazing. New work, I love new work. I love originating roles. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to think about that musical question. I love, um, Hamilton. I haven't been in Hamilton. I would love to step into Hamilton. Um, classic roles, musicals. Oh, maybe uh, Dream Girls. How about that? I'm ready for huh? that. There we're we ready. go. What about Dream Girls? There we go. Yeah, a little, a little Curtis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoot, <laughs> got one. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a yeah. good one. Hey, Josh, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. I this really is between shows. It. This is a big deal. Yeah, so we really, really appreciate it. I have a lot of energy. Do you know, it's a shorter week for me than uh, everybody else. Yeah, thankfully. that's true. All right. Well, thank you so um, much, guys. See Network. Hey, look, y'all come through. <laughs> you got to see Network wild. if you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, take us on out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast version by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Stomp creator Luke Cresswell about the show's 25th anniversary.